There are 10 specialists in Hunter x Hunter and today we are ranking all of them. Here's the basic criteria I used. As you can see, this ranking is mostly based on combat strength rather than overall capabilities. To define a specialist, we will be using the updated Nen chart released a couple of months ago in conjunction with the Hunterpedia for those that are not mentioned in the chart. Also, I am aware that New World Review did a similar video a couple of weeks ago, so I just wanted to clarify that this video has been in the works since before his video got released. I'm not attempting to copy him, it's just a bit of a coincidence. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off at number 10, we have Aluka. Let me explain. Is Aluka technically the strongest character in the show? Yes. Could she potentially destroy the world? Has she caused many people great fortune and great trouble? Yes and yes. But could she hold her own in a fight? No. In fact, Aluka's not even in control of the power she holds. She needs someone else to make the power work. Without it, she's quite literally a helpless child and is no threat at all. That's why trapping her alone under the Zoldic Mansion worked to keep her under control. So despite Aluka being the strongest character in Hunter x Hunter, she is last on this list. At 9, we have Neon. Neon is definitely the weakest person on this list that actually has control of their ability. This most mostly stems from her not being a traditional Nen user, and instead being a Nen genius who doesn't even know she's using Nen. Her ability is not even combat based, which just makes her case even worse. The main reason she's over Aluka is because she actually has control over her ability, and because she's like twice Aluka's age and could probably beat her in a fist fight if she had to. But there is no way she could beat anyone else on this list, including the next person, which is Hina. Hina is in a weird place. Her ability is not combat based at all, as she is a Nen expert. But her physical strength is off the charts. Like she just casually picks up an enormous piece of stone. While this isn't a huge feat compared to some Nen users, it is a lot compared to the people below her. Unfortunately, we don't get to see a ton of Hina in Hunter x Hunter, which makes ranking her accurately kind of hard. But based on what we do see, I think 8th is the best place for her. At number 7, we have Meleron. Meleron is another weird one to rank. He is almost definitely physically weaker than Hina, but he has one of the best Nen abilities in the show. Show. God's Accomplice would be a huge threat if it was in the hands of someone that could use it more effectively. It allows the user to become invisible and undetectable by any means, but the user must hold their breath to do so. Despite this ability, I don't think Meleron will succeed in many combat situations. As I mentioned, he lacks the physical strength most ants have, but the main reason he's down here is because of the flaws of his ability. Meleron can still get hit while using God's Accomplice. While he might be able to beat some opponents using a hit and run technique, any opponent whose ability has a large area of effect will be able to hit him and kill him without much trouble. So despite having one of the best abilities in the show, I don't think I can put him any higher. Following Maleron at number 6 we have our third Chimera Ant, Leol. Leol is a pretty cut and dry case. He has a great Nen ability with low restrictions and decent versatility. It basically allows him to borrow an ability from someone that he has helped for a one-time use. This does mean that he has to be careful about which abilities to use when, but that's a fairly low drawback compared to the advantages he gets. We don't know much about Leol's physical strength, but we can assume it's somewhat lacking as he does not seem too keen on fighting those that are stronger than him. Obviously, he does lose in the one fight we see him in, but I feel like the odds were kind of stacked against him the moment he went against Against moral. Overall, I think Leol is by far the strongest and most versatile specialist we've come across so far, which has earned him the sixth spot on this list. Now let's move on to some of the real heavy hitters. But before we do, please consider subscribing. Like really, what reason do you have not to subscribe? You probably rarely check your subscription box and YouTube is gonna show you the content you want to see anyway. Subscribing is of no detriment to you and it's a huge benefit for this channel. Now then, let's move into our top five, starting with Saridnik. Seeing a Saridnik this high up might be surprising considering his lack of experience, but that should show you just how broken his ability is. Parallel Future is one of the most broken abilities in Hunter x Hunter, allowing the user to see into the future for 10 seconds by entering Zetsu and then changing the future based on what they see. This ability has huge implications in combat and outside of it. Information is one of the most important aspects of a Nen battle, and being able to get information 10 seconds before your opponent and then adjusting accordingly is a huge 
huge advantage. The only real drawbacks are that you have to use Zetsu to get into it, and like God's Accomplice, it is weak to abilities with a huge area of attack. This is because the user cannot avoid these attacks even with the knowledge it is coming. It is also likely that he is weak to being outsped, because if someone can move faster than he can enter Zetsu, he will probably lose straight up. Oh, and that's not even talking about his Nen Beast, which he also has working for him. To be honest, it's kind of hard to take this beast into consideration for combat, as we've never seen it in a direct combat situation. We know it can hurt people who lie to the prince, but we don't know if it can defend him directly, or what that might look like. For this reason, I'm choosing to weigh the Nen Beast less than his actual ability, because it's hard to rank something if you don't really know how it works. And number 4, we have Paku. Paku is another one that's kind of hard to rank, but she has two advantages that no one else on this list has guns. But seriously, every person in the Phantom Troop is a strong Nen user, and Paku is no exception. Despite having two abilities that are not combat related, she is still a strong fighter. This is partially because of her Glock, and partially because of her mind reading capabilities. If she even lays a hand on an opponent and asks a smart question, she could potentially learn their entire Nen arsenal, as well as a lot of additional information about them. As I already mentioned, information plays a huge role in a Nen battle, so this would be a huge advantage. Pair this with her ability to fight at a range, and her ability to think rationally under pressure, and it should become obvious why she's number 4. Unfortunately, she is no match for our person at number 3, Karapika. Karapika is also an interesting case. I feel like I've been saying that a lot this video, but I mean they are interesting cases, they're specialists. Karapika is both a specialist and a conjurer, but in the current manga arc, it feels like he relies a lot more on his specialist ability, Emperor Time. Emperor Time basically allows the user to become a master of each Nen category. It can also act as a condition for more powerful abilities, because it comes with a huge drawback of one hour off your life for every 10 seconds you use it. Emperor Time is a great great ability, but where I think Karapika really shines is his intelligence. While the Karapika of York knew was hot-headed and kind of rash, the Karapika of the Succession War has been level-headed, cunning, and pragmatic in a super high-stakes environment. On top of Emperor Time, he also has four chains that he can use in any combat situation, all of which have a different purpose in combat. From healing, to straight-up killing, to stealing abilities, he is a one-man army and one that has proven himself against some of the strongest Nen users in the show. Our second place contender is quite literally the opposite of Karapika. It's Krolo. I went back and forth on whether Karapika or Krolo should be number two. In a head-to-head, -head, Karapika would probably win, but in general, I think Krolo would have an easier time against a wider variety of opponents than Karapika would. He has a huge number of abilities at his disposal, and with the improvements to Skill Hunter that happened in the manga, he has become a serious combat threat. The ability to use two completely different Nen abilities in conjunction is crazy, especially when it can be any two abilities. Imagine using Indoor Fish with Cross Game. That's literally just a free win. In fact, Indoor Fish with almost anything is kind of broken. You know what else is kind of broken? Being able to use one ability without holding the book, which is also something Krolo can do in the manga. He mentions there are more restrictions when it comes to acquiring an ability, but that's not a terrible restriction, because it does not impede how he uses the ability once it is acquired. Much like Karapika, Krolo's main strength is his intelligence. He was able to see right through Karapika in York New, and he also came up with a winning strat against Hisoka, which is a pretty hard thing to do. He also predicted the invention of the internet, which is absolutely insane for a child to do, and a child of Meteor City no less. He has proven his intellect time and time again, showing that he is one of the most intelligent characters in the show and worthy of the number two spot on this list. Throughout this whole video, I've been talking about the importance of intelligence and versatility and all this stuff that is important for a Nen battle. All of that goes out the window for number one, because they're just so much more powerful than anyone else on this list. Nefer P2. Do I need to say anything else? Nefer P2 is literally a monster. Who needs high intelligence or great power when you can launch yourself across miles of jungle at subsonic speed? Who needs crazy Nen abilities when you can take a hit from one of the strongest Nen abilities in the show? like nothing. Who needs years of experience training when you just have it that way? And the craziest part is that P2 does have high intelligence, they do have great power, 
and they do have some pretty crazy Nen abilities. Let's just start with their intelligence. I mean, they dissected a brain on the first try. Do you really need any more evidence than that? They were able to understand the threat of adult Gon immediately and executed the plan for puppeteering the entire country. Their cat-like intuition has also helped them multiple times throughout the show, but even without their insane intelligence, P2 is still a threat thanks to their Nen. Never P2 has some of the highest Nen output of anyone in the show. I mean, just look at the size of this N. Their N itself is a weapon, as we have seen it freezing opponents in their spot multiple times just by the nature of their aura. In combat, their main Nen ability would probably be Terpsichora, which is an ability that allows P2 to surpass their physical limits. This would be a great advantage on almost all people, but it's even more powerful on a character as strong as P2. P2 has one more advantage in combat that no one else on this list really has. It's their mentality. See, P2 wants to fight. They enjoy fighting and they enjoy going after strong opponents. This is an advantage when you're fighting someone that doesn't want to fight or only fights when they have to. Fighting someone who wants to fight is completely different than fighting someone who has to fight. It's a small determination, but it's one that's important to note, especially when doing these rankings. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, the best way you can support me is to watch another video back to back. And if you didn't, let me know why in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next week for another video.